good evening viewers and uh, thank you so much for joining us this Friday the 6th of December right here at Kenya's Gold. Now it's beginning to feel a lot like the festive season and right here at Kenya's Gold we do want to make sure that we close this year with a bang. Now every single day on this show Monday to Thursday we do focus on different food crops and animals as well and then on Friday we come to together to explore solutions on what we can do to make sure that 50 years from now, 100 years from now, 150 years from now, we're still able to produce enough food. And that's where the topic of sustainability comes in. And that's our focus every single Friday. Once again, good evening viewers. And thank you so much for joining us. We do have an absolutely great show lined up for you as we wrap up this week. My name is Violetta Angina. Right now, my fellow farmer and host is still not with us. He's out there, Emmanuel Terere, interacting with more farmers. He will be back with us in studio next week. So please anticipate absolutely good stuff when he comes back. Now, moving on to the agenda of the day. Like I said at the beginning, Friday is all about sustainability and uh, climate action. Now, in line with uh, sustainability, soil is a very crucial component component if we are to achieve food security now and in the future. Now speaking of soil, this week we did mark the World Soil Day which is celebrated every year on the 5th of December. Now the purpose of this day is to create global awareness on the importance of taking care of our soils. Now a healthy soil is very important given that 95% of the the food we consume comes from the soil and at the same time the soil serves as a home for about 59% of the planet's species. Therefore if agriculture is to thrive we need to take care of our soils. Now in the spirit of taking care of our soils there is a lot of smart farming practices that farmers in the arid and semi-arid regions can deploy to make sure that they enjoy maximum productivity from their farms. In case you're wondering what smart farming practices am I talking about, you get to find out about that and more from our farmers who are reaping big all the way in Machakos County. Take a look. Miko Majina naito Patrick Mutua Mnyao. Lakini ukipenda unaweza kaniita jua hiyo jina inajulikana sana hapa. Ile eneo naitwa Mudesia. Desia iko Masinga, Masinga sub county in Machakos county. Na ni moja wapo ya areas ambao ni semi-arid areas. Kwa mainti nimelima kwa muda mrefu. I think this is the third fourth year. Ni kilima mainti tu. Yeah. Mainti, 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 machungwa tu ndiyo nimeanza, imeanza kufikia kiwango cha kunikia kuanza kufruti. Ya, yeah, kidogo nilikuja ni kabalisha systemu ya vile watu wanalima hapa. They do a lot of tilling. Lakimi nikuwa nikaona hii mambo ya kufanya tilling ya chane nae. Nikao natumia tu ile semu ambayo nataka kuotesha mainti. So the rest of the, the, the land na hecha ikiwa, ikiwa, uh, ikiwa fakan. Kwa vuhu, Season after season, I keep on naamisha, niliotesha uh, semu hii, naamia semu ingini, naamia semu ingini. Lakini mambo ya kulima na njebe kwenye shamba hapa, na hiyo ni mishaja. Sababu machungwa, mizisi kwa mingi pale. Alafu, I do a lot of uh, mulching. I used to do a lot of mulching. Na nafikiri ndi yume nisaidia sana. Uh, kuna hii shamba hiko tofauti na mashamba mengine. Much enough to me, I am minded to Nayalima. I am minded to Nayalima, but I have Kuvuna, Latandika, I am minded. I have a Nizake, Majaniake, a lauf, Smokombi was Limi, Wakatua, Kutarisha, Shamba, Nafanya, two slashi. So, no Kutaile Nas, Nailaza Hapo. I normally don't uh, throw anything uh, Balina, Queen Shamba. 
yeah mchafu wote alafu even after shelling the the, the, the mains hiyo mizoro yote narudisha wapi na inafanya nini na iweka sehemu ina 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 dikobos alafu narudisha kwa shamba hii mizogoro after doing the shelling ya main ya ya mind hii naiweka hapa for two seasons alafu after the composing inarudisha kwa kwa shamba like now this one hii si unaona iko tayari this this one has been there for two seasons it means one year narudisha sababu kuto naotesha mara mbili kwa kwa mwaka so nikifuta nikifuna hii this season na hiacha two seasons inarudi tena kwa shamba ikiwa imeandikwa based the way you are saying now like this one it's ready so next season kabla sijaanza kuotesha hii nitarudisha shambani ile ingine pande hii itakapo for one season alafu nirudisha kwa kwa shamba pia yeah kwa hivyo ni kitu ina inakwenda ni sakal Uh, my name is Al Simon Wanjohi. I'm the farm agronomist here in Modesia. I'm happy about the farmer Mr. Mutua for giving me that chance to assist him in these drought resistant crops that is the oranges, the pixies and the maize. I perhaps pay a visit here that is twice a month or thrice a month to check on the progress since we say farms are like our babies we need to keep day in day out looking on what is happening once you look around at the farm it's a uh, 13 point something acres we do maize for two seasons but for oranges it's a one season unless now we have the mid season which is harvested uh, after the full season uh, normally we do minimum tillage that is we do not use jembes on our farms to plow to avoid soil erosion once we are done after planting our maize is sprayed with foliar fertilizers this is after germination once applied with planting fertilizer it's done we control our pests normally through chemicals that are recommended from the PCPB two scouting done can even assist us do it manually for most of the places in dry areas they say production is very low if you just look around one of the things that has enhanced us and maneuver to this point we are in it's the mulching process we do mulching every season to avoid excessive weeds germination in the farm for our maize once we start doing the foliars they are up to a height of 2 to 3 feet and others are about now 4 5 feet it is suppresses the weeds down here mulching at the oranges helps us now during the dry season they will be able to retain a little moisture and enhance flowering because we do not have water for irrigation unless now we are going to have a borehole then we can do the drip system what we do mostly it's planting that maize before the rains it's called dry planting advantages of dry plantings are several once the seed it's done during our dry planting you will get that germination is very fast due to adequate nitrogen fresh from the atmosphere once it rains because the temperatures here are high 3 to 4 weeks maize is done a good program that is to enhance 75 days maturity is not lost on the way for pana and pioneer varieties as a farmer recommendation is done on weather conditions the land being steep was a challenge but we have yet done something called contours these are those mitaros we do make soil is removed inaitwa fanya ju it helps to cover up water running from the top point of the land to the tipe slopes of the land whereby that water retained there will not carry away the soil nutrients 
It's also done through mulching, as you can see. These ones help tap excessive soil moisture. Once you check, mulch is done, it's still moist. But when you come to the main field, now where we have our maize, it's getting dry. And because the rains have gone, this moisture will help the oranges and the maize too. We do not advise farmers dig holes towards the bottom part of the farm. We advise after those contours or the mulching points, you do holes at most seven of them. Once you are digging these holes, you do not dig them exactly where the other line was. Ensure there is correct spacing since we do one seed per hole. That is 75 by 25. At this point you look, the seed is 25 to 30 centimeters. From low to row, it's 75 centimeters. Once we are done with this for this season, the following season, the seed will not be planted at the same point with this one. In between the rows, that's where the seed now will come in. Digging the holes, it's only done using a djembe and a slight point that is about five to seven centimeters deep. Once you do deep digging, all machinery operations here at the farm, we shall damage the roots of the oranges and the pixies. And because we need a minimum disturbance of the roots, that's why we cut short the mechanization processes. Anyway, uh, up what Nafun and Dizzy, after every two weeks, I normally sell about two, which costs about 2,000 or so. Sababu ni kwamba hii shimo hapa tulikuwa tumeweka fish pod na wakati fish pod tuliacha kuweka tukaweka matawi ya ya mains mains stock na ile takataka nyazi tunakata tunaweka hapa kwa hivyo unaona kukinyesha kuna kuwa na maji ndio maana unaona ndizi hazijakauka ukienda mahali kwingine utakuta wale walikuwa na ndizi hata wale walituuzia sasa hawana ndizi A great feature there, teaching us the importance of conservation agriculture and the benefits that you get from the same. Now, with adapting modern day technology when it comes to agriculture, we do have the potential of converting arid and semi-arid land into food baskets. Now, if you take a look at some of the arid counties that we do have in Kenya, they include Baringo, Isiolo, Marsabit County, Tana River, Wajia, Garissa, Mandera, Samburu, and Turkana. Now, these are some of the counties that receive little to no rainfall annually. And if you take a look at the semi-arid counties, these counties are quite dry, but they receive a bit more rainfall if you compare them with the arid counties. Now, here we're talking about Embo, Kilifi, Kuala County, Lamu, Meru, Nyeri, West Pokot, Kajiado, Kitui, Laikipia, Makweni, Narok, and Taita Taveta County. Now, despite the minimal rainfall that is received in this county, there is still hope in agriculture if we embrace modern technology. Now, we are taking a break right now, but when we come back, we will be joined by Mr. Paul Mbugwa, who is the CEO at Collectives International, and he will be talking to us in depth about digital transformation in agriculture and the opportunities therein for the young people. You don't want to miss out on that conversation. See you after this break.